about how to bring up new software for RISC-V using RISC-V Pokey, which is all part of the uh, Yocto project. So Sagar already taught you a little bit about how to build software for RISC-V. And um, for complex application, that's qu actually quite a complex process. So you start off by building RISC-V toolchain, building RISC-V Linux. Uh, then you need to download the applications you want to build, patch them, um, and uh, build the application. You also have to build all the dependencies. You have to install them all into your sysroot, and then eventually you have to put them all in image and uh, then run them in QMU. So this is, for complex applications such as Python, this is quite a lot of work. Uh, it's also quite error-prone in the sense that um, if you get one step in the middle wrong, you can easily run the problems with your file system and redo a lot of these steps. It also means that when you bring up a new application, you can't really share these results with other people. The next person who wants to bring up the same application has to do the work all over again. And finally, if some dependency along the way changes, you probably have to redo a lot of this. And um, as we were bringing up more and more complex applications, we quickly decided that we needed some sort of Linux distribution. We wanted something that gives us an automatic build process to do these things, track dependencies automatically, and also leverage as much existing work as we could. Uh, we also wanted something that would eventually allow us to um, produce binary packages for RISC-V that we could just chip uh, or produce SDKs that people can just install on their machine rather than having to rebuild everything. So um, we looked at a couple of alternatives and we eventually decided to port the Yocto project. One of the reasons was that it's very well supported. It's an official work group within the Linux Foundation and it's uh, supported by a large number of industrial partners including companies like uh, Broadcom, Huawei, Intel, uh, AMD, LG, Texas Instruments. This is only a small subset, there are lots of them. Um, Yocto consists of two parts. The first is a collection of uh, hundreds of what's called recipes. So recipes are scripts written in a combination of Bash and Python that describe how to build different packages for different platforms. This collection is maintained in collaboration with the Open Embedded Project, which is another project related to Yocto. Um, the second part of Yocto is a tool called BuildBake, BitBake, which is a parallel build system that takes these recipes and configuration files and then automatically fetches the sources for everything it wants to build, applies any patches, and then cross-compiles them, manages the build root for you, uh, sorry, the sys, uh, the sys root for you, and creates images or um, RPM or Debian packages and SDKs and so on. So this automates a lot of the things that we want to do for complex applications. Uh, one thing that's nice about Yocto is that it um, focuses a lot on customiz customizability and the build process. So you can create a lot of different targets and customize it to whatever hut you want to be working on, which with um, our setup in Berkeley where we have uh, things running on FPGAs, on real chips, on QMU, is actually very useful. So I want to give a brief introduction of how to get started using Pokey. And um, to do so, I want to show you how to build a full Linux system. So you, you start off with a system that has nothing installed but, say, a normal Linux distribution, and you want to build the GCC toolchain, Linux, RISC-V, QMU, and large set of packages, including SSH, Python, Perl, etc. So you first clone the um, RISC-V Pokey repository. Um, then you go into that direction, directory and uh, call one file to initialize the build environment. And then you just invoke BitBake and say, build me an image that includes the default set of packages. And Pokey, uh, Pokey just goes off and looks through all his recipes, initializes the build system, and then spends a long time just downloading packages, patching them, installing them, creating RPMs, um, and creating this, uh, a root of S, which is then puts in a directory for you to run. Um, so after potentially a couple of hours, it will complete. And then you can just use one of the scripts that comes with the distribution that allows you to run the result in QMU. And it will just boot up. Um, this is using a, a sys5 init style um, approach. So you have run levels and all these things. It will set up an SSH server for you. So you can actually SSH into it. And uh, here you have Python running in it. So it's, this shows even some of the more uh, complex features where it, for example, calls into a C library. Um, so this is literally just four commands to get all these things running. So once you have the basic setup, uh, you might want to build applications that are not in the default image. Um, that is fairly easy to do, so you just edit this file and um, add a list of packages that you would like to be built and installed. And the system will just go off and do exactly that when you invoke BitBake the next time. You might also want to build packages to use in the package manager on the target, 
That actually is already done for you. So after completing this whole process, you'll have a directory where you have an RPM for everything that has been built. And you can throw this in an Apache server potentially and then use it with a package manager. And that's still something we want to set up um, over time. Uh, you can actually configure your build to uh, fit your setup. For example, you can select a different init system. So we use Sys5 for, for now, but uh, Yocto also supports systemd. So we haven't tried that, but um, with a bit of additional work, that might work on your system. Um, if you want to use it not in QMU, but on real hardware, you also only have to change one line in the config file. You have to change the machine from QMU risk 5 to risk 5 and then it will actually instantiate the HDIF drivers instead of the vert IO drivers, and you can run it, for example, on a Z board. Um, and finally, you can also use an externally built toolchain if you, for example, want to experiment with the compiler. Now, this is all great if the application you want to build is already there, but what if you want to bring up software that hasn't been ported to risk 5 yet? And uh, I would like to show you how to add that to Pokey. And uh, as a first step, I want to show you what, how Yocto is actually structured internally. So Yocto is based on uh, a concept that they call layers. And layers are essentially uh, tree directory trees that contain recipes and that are overlaid on top of each other. Uh, they usually contain two different, two different kinds of files. So on the one hand, they contain .bb files, which are complete recipes for packages, such an, as an application or a library. And then they contain bb append files, which are files that allow you to adapt any recipes in layers below you. So the way that is used is that you normally start with a layer that contains all your basic recipes, uh, called meta in Yocto. And then, for example, you might have a layer on top of that for a specific architecture that adapts any of these recipes so that it runs on this architecture. On top of that, you might have a layer for your specific board, which, for example, includes things like drivers or any configure setting it has to adapt to run on that board, and then you might have a layer for Java or UIs and so on. So it's very modular. And the way we integrate RISC-V into the stack is that we have one layer that contains all the RISC-V specific changes, and you put that layer on top and we'll patch everything in the layers below to make it run on RISC-V. And uh, this also allows us to maintain, it, uh, maintain our port without many changes to the core um, uh, Pokey repository. So we're tracking actually the main line and it should be very easy to integrate these things over time. So say you want to bring up a new application. Uh, one of two things might happen. The first thing is, which is probably the more likely case, that the recipe already exists in a lower layer. Um, in some cases, it will just run out of the box, but you might also have to do some patching, for example, uh, adapt some configure script to know about RISC-V. So what you would do in that case is you add an additional bb append file to meta risc 5 which contains any patches, any additional configure settings, and uh, then you should be able to compile it. In some scenarios, there's no recipe yet. In that case, you can write a full recipe and add that to meta risc 5 Whichever of these you do, we would strongly encourage you to um, send us pull requests. We would really like to grow Pokey over time and support a larger uh, number of packages on risc 5 and by sending us pull requests, we can integrate this, and the next person who wants to run the same application can just reuse this work. To give you an idea what these recipes look like, uh, this is a very simple one for the wget utility. You have, some, you have some metadata at the beginning, which, for example, tells you uh, the license or the runtime dependency. And the next line, where it says inherit, that is really where the magic happens, because this allows you to import Yocto functionality where Yocto already knows how to build many different kinds of packages. For example, wget is based on the normal auto tools flow of saying configure, make, make, install. And by inheriting the autocon functionality, it will basically just run these steps. Uh, the next line gives it a couple of additional settings for the configure command. Um, this, these are some of the things you might need to do when you adapt something for RISC-V. At the bottom, this uh, source URI tells you where to download the sources. So in this case, there are two sources. There's the actual wget tar gz file from the new mirror repository, and then there is a patch file which is specific to Yocto, and you include that with your recipe. And as you can also see, there, is, um, there are checksums there um, to give you some more robustness. So um, before concluding, I'd like to mention a couple more Yocto features. Yocto is actually quite powerful. It has a couple of uh, really nice features. So for example, it has GUI that allows you to control Bitbake, which makes it very nice to just browse through the different packages that are available. 
You can set up a build server, which you can use for, for example, continuous integration. And there are also lots of, I would, I would call industry strength features. There's lots of QA, for example, where output is checked for whether binaries, for example, have the right sections. Uh, it checks license files to make sure that you're compliant. And you can actually set up a central build repository to share intermediate build results with other people in your organization so that not every single machine has to rebuild everything, but can just pull intermediate results from that server. So what's next? Um, the first thing that um, is, so since, since two days ago, we actually have a second Linux distribution. Palmer uh, over here did a, a Gentoo port. And Gentoo is actually very similar to, um, to Yocto. So in fact, Bitbake is based on, based on Portage, which is the Gentoo build tool. And our plan is that, um, that we will also port any recipes that we receive for RISC-V Pokey. We'll also in integrate them into Gentoo so that we can grow both of these distributions at the same time. Um, Gentoo is more of an application uh, of a distribution that's targeted as kind of desktop style scenarios. Yocto is very useful for open, uh, embedded scenarios, but they're really very similar on the recipe format is as well. There are a lot of packages that we are currently bringing up. Um, we are going to add target side LVM very soon, and we have an almost finished port of libffi, which is a dependency for a lot of different applications, including uh, Java. There's also a lot more stuff we'd like to bring up, um, such as, for example, GNOME or um, actually a Java virtual machine. So we're looking into OpenJDK right now. Um, one of the things we want to do in the near future is to actually start distributing binary SDKs so that you don't have to build your entire tool chain when you run, when you uh, want to start uh, using RISC-V. And uh, finally, we also would like to start building an official RISC-V package repository so that you can use a, a package manager on your target and download RISC-V packages from there. Um, so you can clone RISC-V Pokey at that address. Um, and if you port any software to RISC-V, we'd really like to encourage you to send us pull requests. This really will help us to grow this repository over time and get more and more software up and running. Thank you. <laughs>